For a long time, our mental health was considered by many something best kept to ourselves. Problems lurked just beneath the surface, often only emerging when the situation became critical. We've come a long way since then, to the point that the government promised an end to the chronic underfunding of the past and that there would be parity in the way in which the NHS deals with mental and physical well-being. And yet, recent research shows that many clinical commissioning groups, CCGs, plan to reduce the proportion of their budget spent on mental health, putting projects like the Young People's Advisory Service in Liverpool at real risk. I was very anxious at the time when I first accessed and quite depressed as well. And I've been to the doctors consistently and they just put it down to hormones. You're growing up, you know, it's hormones, it's normal, this is what happens. And I just remember sat there thinking, this, this isn't normal, you know, I don't know anyone else who feels the way that I do. I went through school, like, being different to everyone else. I was jumping on tables, jumping under the tables, just not cooperating with the teachers at all. And um, they just thought, naughty kid, just doesn't want to learn. My story started when I was in foster care, uh, just after I ended, left foster care, when I moved here to the university. Um, I was going through a bit of depression and social, I didn't have the so situations that, that I could talk to people quite quickly as normal people would. I didn't have the, that friendship group to talk to, so I was left by myself alone most of the time. I'm just like this. Provision of services for young people is particularly sensitive, given that the overwhelming majority of mental health problems in adulthood first present before your mid-twenties. really didn't enjoy school because social anxiety, because I have a struggle with Asperger's and a mild form of ADHD. So um, I was also struggling with my sexuality as well. I've been able to be more confident, more free about myself and to be a, ha a normal, happy person instead of being a sad person that was on medication all the time. I wouldn't have been able to do this four years ago. I really wouldn't. How important then a part of your life is wiper? It's very much, you know, very significant. A, ver a very big significant part of my life, very important because I do not think I would be the person I am today without them. But like many other services around the country, Ypass has lost a huge amount of their funding through no fault of their own, instead because of decisions made by their local clinical commissioning group. It's around 43% the funding reduction, £750,000. That's 26 staff members. That's around 15 therapists and 11 information advice and guidance workers which offer lower level support. Catastrophic, disastrous. What children and young people need is they need somebody, a service, to support them with those real intense feelings that they're experiencing. The need to cut themselves just to stay alive, not to cut themselves to die, to cut themselves to stay alive and to help, and for an organisation to help them make sense of why they're needing to do that in order to cope. We do that on a daily basis. All this while the government maintains that funding is substantially increasing. In real terms, yes, the money has gone up, but the demand has outstripped that supply and the cost of treatment goes up about 3 or 4% a year as well. So politicians like to talk about in real terms. In real terms, it's a cut. And that's where you really into the idea of which will do the least harm. Not the most benefit anymore, that's a very different conversation. And that led to some governing body meetings at Liverpool CCG that was some of the most difficult meetings of my life. Because we had doctors and nurses, because that's what CCGs are run by, with our management colleagues round a table putting lines through various bits of contracts that we knew were going to have absolute impact on the front line to the people of this city. But we had to weigh that up against the least harm. 757,000, it's 47%. Little wonder that the local MP is calling for mental health spending to be ring-fenced, if, that is, a space can be found in the upcoming budget. We know that the overwhelming majority of adults with a diagnosable mental health condition will have developed it as a young person. 
It doesn't make any sense that young people can't access those services early on to help them and to ensure that they are well into adulthood. We're storing up so many more problems for the future if we don't really focus on this and get it right. And it's clear from all the evidence that we're not getting it right. I'm hearing the stories firsthand from parents whose children are attempting to take their lives. I've got an example of one I've received just in the last few hours. There are definitely children attempting to take their lives. We know the levels of self-harm amongst young people are increasing and there's a massive correlation between self-harm and people that ultimately go on to take their lives. This is a very serious matter. This is a life or death matter. You know, that, that any young person that takes their life is a tragedy. Let's stop those tragedies and let's ensure that it doesn't happen. Clearly, it is difficult, to say the least, to entirely justify the government's claim that they're putting uh, mental health care provision on an equal footing with that for our physical well-being, particularly in a part of the country like this, where demands on the NHS in general are increasing far faster than the funding. And that's the thing about mental health care. Early intervention is key to its efficacy and indeed can end up saving the NHS money. Properly funded, trained support is required if the government's promises on mental health are to amount to more than words. For lives are at stake here, and much more is needed than a mere shoulder to cry on.